Hello everyone! You're watching the first ever official tutorial video dedicated to the mass multiplayer action game Crossout. You are a survivor in a world that has been devastated by a global pandemic. Everything you know lies in ruin. It's everyone for himself now, and your vehicle is your best and only friend. One which you'll have to build with your own hands from scratch. The one that you will use to fight for valuable resources needed to survive. Luckily for you, Crossout offers the unparalleled ability to construct your machine. Be it a machine gun equipped muscle car, a military APC with flamethrowers, or a heavily armored tank with high caliber weapons, or even a motorized combat couch. The sheer variety of parts, modules, and weapons will unleash your inner mechanic in no time. But time is scarce, and you have to act now. Our show will prepare you for combat and show you all the ropes you need. We'll cover everything from basic game mechanics to advanced construction techniques and combat tactics. This very first episode will help you get to know the basics of Crossout. Today we'll learn how to launch the game go through your very first practice battle and get some rewards. Basically, we will do the typical gameplay cycle that you will repeat many more times in the future. First things first, all vehicles in game are built using blueprints. Now, the constituent parts are a whole different topic and will be covered in a greater detail in another lesson. For now, Let's take things slow and build a basic understanding of the whole construction process. Available parts are stored in your storage, where they are sorted by type, awaiting their R or glory. The parts can be sorted by groups and rarity, from the most basic ones, color gray, to exceptionally rare relic parts, orange parts. Your very first ride consists of a frame, a cabin, some cover elements, a couple of TS machine guns, a jack, and four wheels. Two wheels can be steered, the so-called STs and starter wheels. All these parts come with a basic blueprint for your starter car and can be assembled together using this blueprint at any time. This ride will suffice early on, but you will need to improve the design as you play. Let's find out how to get better parts now. Starter and regular parts can be salvaged after battle. By combining available parts with some resources, you can create better parts of varying rarity. For that, you will need a workbench, which is provided to you at the start by the engineer's faction, since it's your basic faction when you begin. All starter parts can be crafted free of charge, but in order to create better parts, you will have to rent another workbench with in-game gold. Don't worry about that gold just yet, we'll talk about it and how to make some later. Most parts have several key parameters, the first of which is energy. The energy is generated by a cabin and generator, while other parts usually consume energy to work. The balance between generation and consumption of energy in the vehicle regulates how many parts can be installed and used on any particular ride. Every part in the game has a parameter called the power score. The more power score your ride has, the more weaponry and armor it currently carries. Your ride will be match-made in multiplayer depending on your ride's power score. Structure points is a parameter that is basically your ride's health and integrity points. Dealing damage to any part will dwindle that part's structure points until that particular part is destroyed and falls off your ride. Your vehicle's cabin is a whole different story. Its structure points are the core of your ride's health. If your cabin is destroyed, the car will automatically explode. Please remember. Apart from cabin and frame, you can get some extra structure points by using armor and cover parts. But you can only get those from factions by increasing their loyalty to you. Factions of Crossout can be joined by players as they see fit. By fighting for any faction, any player can earn loyalty points with the said faction. The factions in return will provide access to vehicle parts and blueprints. The mechanism is simple. The higher your loyalty with any faction is, the better blueprints and parts they will offer. 
The mechanics are a main and a default game faction that you begin your game with. The other four are the Lunatics, Nomads, Scavengers and Steppenwolves. These are considered extra factions. The first three are accessible starting from a player level 10. The Steppenwolves, however, demand its players be level 25. Each faction deals with threats of the ways differently, which in turn allows them to build drastically different parts. The Lunatics, for example, are all about fast and nimble rides. The Scavengers prefer something with more punch, while the Nomads build their vehicles out of derelict aircraft, trying to find the perfect balance between speed and firepower. Steppenwolves, on the other hand, ride military vehicles into battle and use long-range weapons. Stay tuned for future episodes where we'll cover all in-game factions in greater detail. Okay, let's talk guns. Your first battle will be fought using two starter machine guns. You can change your weapons. The key parameters of guns are the same as with other parts of your ride. In the Weapon Setup tab, you can assign various gun types to different keys. Good! This covers the part basics and we have a basic ride. Hit the To Battle button and let's show the waste who's boss. Now let's take a quick look at available game modes. First there are missions, that's your basic PvP battle, where you can get some simple parts and scrap metal, which is one of the key resources in the game, required for crafting parts too by the way. Rates is where you fight tougher AI and get better rewards. Next are brawls, a free-for-all type battle that is split into two subcategories, free-for-all and storm warning. Free-for-all is a variation of the well-known deathmatch, no surprises here, but the storm warning mode is much cooler. Here you will have to protect your skin not only from your foes, but also from a raging storm. But hey, you can get available scrap and loot containers for doing those. Finally, there's the clans mode, team battles 4 on 4. These will get you scrap and the rarest resource of them all, the uranium ore. The ore is used in high-level gameplay for constructing some of the best parts in the game. Naturally, you can only take part in these battles as a part of a clan. Let's not dare enter this mode for now. For now, let's select missions, since it's perfect for a newcomer such as yourself. Depending on the map, the mission objectives will vary. You will have to capture the enemy base or neutral point somewhere on the map. The controls are what you would expect. WASD for movement, aim with your mouse, hit tab for a detailed map. You can check the team's stats around the edges of the screen, left for your team, right for the enemies. In the bottom right corner of the screen, you can check your radar and minimap. You would do well to listen to a couple of tips before you begin. The easiest way to take out a foe works like a charm. Aim for the enemy's guns and wheels. Without a wheel or two, the foe will have a really hard time navigating the map. Should he lose more, your enemy might become completely immobilized. Without ability to dodge fire, when the enemy expires is only a matter of time. Then you should go for their guns to prevent them from returning fire. Without its machine guns, cannons and shotguns, the target can only ram you or run for its life. Secondly, always try and aim for vulnerable parts of hostile ride. Shoot the cabin if you can. If you manage to destroy it, it's a guaranteed frag for you. See an exposed generator or fuel drum? Concentrate your fire on those ASAP for added explosive damage once they go BOOM! If your foe is heavily armored and his vehicle looks more like a tank, then getting close to such a target is a bad idea. Remove its armor from as far away as possible until he can attack the target's weak spots or you can simply opt to destroy the enemy's exposed wheels and guns. Keep in mind though, most heavy weapons have a long reload time. Move as fast as you can to make it hotter for the enemy to shoot at you. Use cover when you can and then return fire. There's an important thing that you should keep in mind at all times. All these tricks work just as well against you. Always consider that and try to counter them. There are no universal solutions, so even the most experienced drivers got to be on their toes at all times.
If the battle is going really bad for you and you cannot move or fight back, you always have one last trick up your sleeve. By holding down backspace, you can initiate a self-destruct mechanism of your car. The ensuing explosion can seriously harm and even destroy all foes around you. Once the battle is over, you will see what loot you've got and also your progress bar. It shows how long you got left until the next level. Leveling up is critically important. Each few levels, your storage size will increase and your vehicle part limit as well, while factions will give you new armor parts. Congratulations! You've just completed the basic Wasteland Survival course. You just learned all the ropes you need to enter your first battle and win. Good luck fighting and surviving in the world of Crossout. Remember, this is just the beginning. In future episodes, we'll learn everything there is to know about vehicle building, factions, the in-game market, and much more. Please keep in mind that Crossout is still being tested, so some gameplay aspects might change. Let us know what you think and ask all your questions in the comments. The most interesting questions will be addressed in future videos. Well, it's time to move. Be seeing ya!